Rejection. We all know what this feels like, especially those of us who have also seen success. The more rejection, the more success. It's science. Albert Einstein once said, failure is success in progress. Just insert rejection in there and there you go. But seriously, I'm noticing a trend. We're not trying hard enough. It's not that we don't want to land bylines or clients, but we're giving up too soon. We're throwing in the towel before even actually getting in the game. Repeat after me, quantity matters. One more time, quantity matters. Obviously, quality also matters, but it is with quantity, especially when you're first starting out, that you learn, grow, and surprise yourself with unexpected wins. We can't be pitching maniacs all day, every day, but we can set aside a period of time where we zero in and go for it. Here are a couple of questions to consider. Can you send five pitches in one week? Not every week, just one. Can you actually write a descending list of publications that you might pitch if your first shot is a no-go? Can you let go of expectations and just shoot for the moon a few times? No, like actually pitch Rolling Stone. Actually do that. When I pitched Good Housekeeping a few years ago, I did so on a whim. I totally didn't think they'd respond or say yes for that matter. But holy crap, they did. What if I hadn't tried? What if I had said, I just don't have time for this? So let's laugh at rejection. Rejection thinks it's the enemy, but it's not. Here are a few things that we can learn from rejection. Three things we can learn from rejection. Number one, if an editor or client responds to you in order to reject you, that's a good thing. It's golden. Anything they say can be mined for golden nuggets of wisdom, but you can also ask them what didn't work about your idea or proposal. Sometimes they don't answer, but when they do, it's such a helpful stepping stone for the next. You learn it's not really what you wanted anyway. That's number two. You learn what it's really, it's really not what you wanted anyway. Sometimes we think we want something, a huge story, a big contract, but when we get a no, we realize we were secretly hoping for that all along. Let rejection help clarify, simplify, and guide your ultimate goals. Number three, rejection builds bridges. Even if you get a no, you're still building a bridge with someone or a publication or a company. Usually, rejection is not personal or related to your talent anyway. You become a recognizable name, a more familiar way to reach back out when the next idea comes. There's major value in the connection made over rejections. Just want to let you know that Bragworthy Bylines Get Paid and Published in Six Weeks is coming back live. If you would like to join us for the next live round of Bragworthy Bylines, Go ahead and jump on the waitlist at the link in the notes below, and we will get you straight on that list. Anyone on the list gets exclusive discounts, opportunities, and open early cart. So you don't want to miss this. It's a no strings attached waitlist. So don't worry about it. Jump on the waitlist and don't miss this. If you're looking for more training, you can check out some of my offerings. First of all, I have a free four steps to a lucrative freelancing, freelance writing masterclass. That's free. I'll link it below. And then I also have a pitching 101 crash course, as well as secrets to getting published in the New York Times mini course. Take a look, grab one that suits you, and don't miss out on the education you can get for just a few dollars online. I'm so glad you're here, and I'll see you next time.